Hi everyone, my name is Rai Carneiro, I am a Microsoft MVP and a Microsoft Certified Trainer. In this video, I will show you how to use and what is notification pattern with c -Sharp and .NET Core. I would like to ask you in order to kindly subscribe to my channel and also like the video if this is helpful for you. So basically, I will show you what is it and what's the meaning of when you need a notification through an object. It's very easy and very straightforward. So what is a notification? It's simply, uh, in this case, in this demo, an object that the domain used to collect information about errors during the validation of your entities. So instead of throwing some errors um, in your domain logic, you could use an object to uh, apply the notification pattern. So when an errors pop up or when an errors appears, the notification is sent back to the presentation so the presentation can display further information about those errors. So this is very straightforward process and very easy. So let's say that you have your user interface and then you have, let's say, a DTO to transfer this object to your domain. And then we need a very straightforward way to understand and to check if all the properties, uh, if they are filling in like a name or something like that, an email or, or something like that. So it's very easy. I will show you uh, a demo, a very simple, uh, on how to do that. So I have here Visual Studio 2019 and I will create a new project. So file, new project, and then I will create a sample using console app. I write here notification demo and then uh, I will simulate here a single entity uh, that goes by the name of person and then this entity person should be responsible to validate itself. So let's create here in this solution first let's create a folder and I call it entities. Uh, then I will create another folder and I will create here a result folder. And then inside this entity, let's create our first entity that I will call it a uh, person. So this represents a personal entity on your system. Uh, what we're going to do here is very simple. I will create a public class and then I will uh, create the properties. So prop G for creating private sets here. I will go by the name of string and name. String name. And then what we're going to do here is another one, prop G, tab, tab, to create another one um, that I will say string and email, right? We're missing here one important property that is um, a git and this is going to be the ID. Okay, so this is a very common task that we do usually, right? So. Um, I use an encapsulation here, so I will create, I will generate the constructor here to pass the values. And then um, for this, we're going to add a package. Okay, so you go here to package manage console. If you can see this here, you just go to view, other tools, other windows, views, other windows, and then this is going to be here, package manager console. All right, so we need to install here, install package. Fluent Validator. It's made by a Brazilian MVP. It's very helpful. So we need to install this uh, on your project. And after doing this, uh, here on Constructor, what you're going to do is we're going to add the validation. Add validation. Validation for the fields. All right. So let's say that, for example, the name, it should have at least three characters and no more than 10. So we need to start doing the notifications here. So there is a method called add, add notifications, notifications. We need to add here uh, the using, right, for the package. Let's check if this was installed first. Package Fluent Validator, it's here. So using Fluent Validator. And what we're going to do here is add notifications. But before doing this, we need to inherit here notifiable. Okay, this class is from this Fluent Validator. 
and is responsible for doing all the notifications for the entity. So there is now this method add notifications and we need to create a new class here called validation contract. This validation contract, uh, what this is going to do pretty much is to pass which are the properties that we need to verify. And for this, we have many options. So, for example, has min len. Um, and then we need to say here what is the property. So, for example, name. And then what's the minimum value here? So, three. The property that I will display back to the user interface will be name. And I will write here name property must have at least three chars. Um, I will do the same for this property, but right now I want something like has max length name. The maximum is going to be 10 also. The property that I will display will go also by the name of name. But here you could put something else, okay? There is no problem. Uh, name must not exceed 10 chairs. Um, and let's do the same for the email address. It's very nice from this uh, package that you can only use this method is email and this is going to validate this property email here uh, because uh, they already developed this for us. So it's very straightforward and very easy. So what I have to do here is pass the properties and say email is not valid. So in case the email is not valid and look, we are not using any kind of validation here for the email. We are just uh, passing the email address and for sure there is already a lot of validation contracts here on this package Fluent Validator. Um, okay, so this is good for now. We have the, the class person, our entity, and we are using here Notifiable. So this class will be responsible for notifying itself. What you're going to do now is inside the result, we need to create a DTO here that will be responsible for sending this content for whoever is instantiating it. OK, so the user interface, uh, we could have here like a view model or something like that. It's very easy. In this case, we're going to call it notification result DTO. OK, um, just a, a little disclaimer here. I'm not using any architectural partner or some butter or something like that. I just to make sure that the example is good and you can understand. So don't worry about any architecture or something like that, any specific design here. Um, OK, so here we need another property. So prop G and I will create here a Boolean that will be um, success. Another uh, property, prop G, and then this is going to be a string, message, and then another uh, property here, public object data, get and private set. I'm also using private set here to make sure that we are going through encapsulation. So I will give here, I will press here con control dot and then generate again the constructor okay just make sure this is going to look good so this is how i do it it's readable right all right so we are done so far we have here the person object and we have the validation here and we have also the dto responsible for sending this contract this message that will be the full all right um i will create a, a, a new file here a new class that goes by the name verifier. And this verifier class is going to be something like uh, if you, we have a controller or some business rules, okay? So instead of creating a controller or something, I just create this class. And this class also need to inherit here the notifiable because we are also using this for notifications. Um, what you're gonna do now, I will create a method here, public notification. Um, Let's see what you're going to do. Du, du, du. All right, we'll create here a, a method called execute to execute and create a new instance of person. So uh, the result, what, what, what we're going back here, what we're sending back is this DTO. So public notification result DTO and then execute. And inside this method, what you're going to have is a var person equals to new person 
and then I will pass the name Ray Hai Carneiro, my name, right? And a valid email address that's mine. Um, contact at academia.net.com.br. And then I will create another method here called verify. And then inside this method, I will pass this instance of person. Um, after creating here, this is going to simulate simulate a business rule or validation. Okay. So instead of throwing here um, errors from the .NET framework, what you're gonna do is to validate this model. If this model in my domain, for example, if it's valid or not, and then if it, this is not valid, then I'm going to return a notification to whoever called me. Okay, so here we need to validate the entity, and then we have this method add notifications, and we're going to pass person dot notifications. Um, this notifiable we have here. Um, a ready-only collection called notifications. So this is how I get if that notification from my class, for example, person, if this notification should be uh, called because if there is any contract validation that was broken, then I'm going to have notifications here. Otherwise, I'm not going to have any notifications. Then I need to do a if here, if invalid, I need to return a notification result saying return new notification result DTO and pass the value. So in this case, if this is invalid, I will return false and then I will return please verify the following fields. And also I need to return an object. So here notifications because notifications um, are the ones that will verify notifications they will verify if we have any notifications to return to our screen if everything is okay I should return the same thing however I should return here through because uh, there is no error and then I will say something like let's say validation success and here I'm not passing anything I will just pass a new value but if, if you had some kind of value you could pass here like uh, some return from a database or something like that. So uh, let's recap. It's very easy. Okay, we have created a personal entity, and this personal entity is going to validate itself. I'm validating here the fields, but if I wanted to create any method here to do some specific business logic, I could use, for example, is true or something like that, like here, um, is true, and then I could return any. Uh, through valid from any business logic or something like that, okay? Uh, but for now, we are just checking here the parameters name and email and make sure this is okay. Let me build the application. Let's see if this is working. Yeah, it's building, it's working as expected. So now on program, you click here, we're gonna call it. So I will create a var here, var verify equals new verifier dot execute so I'll tell him to execute and whatever comes from that I will serialize it as JSON so JSON serializer dot serialize and I will pass this verify object to be serialized let's build again just make sure everything is working smoothly all right so let's see what's happened so uh, we have this verify method. We are simulate somehow a controller or something like that. And let's see what what happens now. So I'm coming here inside this method. I create a new object person, um, and then I'm passing to a method called verify. Okay. So what happened is let's see. Okay, we have broken the validation as you can see here. We're saying that the prop, uh, the success was false, and then the message is please verify the following fields. And the data is property name, name must not exceed 10 characters. All right, so why? Because here we have more than 10. So if I put here Ray only, and if I do not use any valid email address, let's see what happened. So I will play again. 
and I just want to make sure that you understand it. So I'll go inside here. Let's see, it's passing the name, email, and then here's doing all the validations on my entity. So here I will tell him to do the validation again. And look, we have one notification here. Email is not valid. So I will throw here if invalid, it's true. This is going to return another error to whoever call it. All right, now let's do um, everything correct. So contact at academia.net.com.br. Let's see what's going to happen. So it's a valid entity. It should be working right now. Let's see what's going to happen. Let me play a key, let continue. And there it is. Now we have a valid entity and it's saying success true and the message is validation success. So um, I hope you like it. I hope this video was uh, helpful and I would like to ask you to go to my source code if you want to download it and take a look. It's on my GitHub. I really hope you enjoyed it.